So here's what everybody in the world is wanting to know. You cry? Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin, as with me as always is Rick. Hello, my friends. Namaste. Namaste. Please follow us on Instagram. Twitter. For more juicy content! Yeah, I love them! Uh, we did just hit 60k last night. Thank y'all so much. And then what happened today? Right after that? What? 10 million channel views. Woo! You just did the deaf thing for you. Sorry, <laughs> headphone users. We love you. Thank, Thank you guys. So much. We love you. Obviously, we couldn't do it without you. Yeah, this is all because Thank of you. Thank you for enjoying our stupidity. Yeah, because we're just us, man. Yeah. You're, you're loving it, so we love that you love it. All right. Okay. We've been waiting a long time for this. And as you have as well. Yeah. Uh, we watched, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the actual name, but it, it, how, how do you pronounce I it? I would pronounce it Tari Zeminpar. Okay. Tari Zeminpar. Uh, starring and directed by Amir Khan. Who? Uh, Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, which I also love that the English translation is like Stars on Earth. I like yeah. that. That's a very cool translation. Uh, yes, this is. So we finally watched it. It's the one that all of y'all thought was going to make me cry. And I got to say something, prefacing this, and I know they're waiting for that answer. I am so thankful we've seen the Amir Khan films in the order that we've seen them. Yeah. Because I think that I've have, uh, there's a level of appreciation with each of them. This is like, this is the way I want people introduced to Amir Khan. I want yeah. them to see three idiots. And then they can go to PK, and then they can go to Dongle, and then they can come to this. I just think it's a fantastic yeah, way to see it. Him. Is. Um, and so uh, we'll probably take a little break after this so we can actually watch some films that don't have a mere comedy. Yeah, for, for those of you screaming, there are other people doing movies in India, guys! <laughs> so, uh, but everyone was screaming at us to watch this. Yes, and I'm glad, and this is. I don't know how long this is going to be, but this is probably going to take us a while because I, we both, I'm sure, have a lot to say. I know I do. So but it's about a uh, an eight year old boy um, who was thought to be lazy and a troublemaker until a new art teacher had the patience and the compassion to discover the real problem behind his struggles in school. And if you've not seen this film, stop watching this and go watch the film. Yes. Because we're going to ruin it for you, and we don't like to do that because it takes away the power of the film to tell the story. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. So, uh, what did you think of it? All right. I I have a lot to say, and I don't want to just get on a soapbox and go into a diatribe. Yeah. Um, but I, this is the best way for me to describe it. There are a lot of films that touch my heart. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a literal, physical feeling I have in my chest. Yeah. That doesn't happen a lot. There's lots of movies. I cry in a lot of movies. But I don't always get this feeling in my chest, mm -hmm. in my heart. Uh, sh the end of Schindler's List mm -hmm. does that to me, where I feel a physical ache in my chest. No film has ever caused my heart to feel that ache as long or as often as this. Well, I'm guessing it's because you being a teacher. This for hit me a long time, and no other film has hit me on as many levels in as powerful a way yeah. because it got me as a teacher, yeah, it got me as a dad, yeah, and it got me as a kid, yeah, because there's a lot I can relate to that little guy about that I experienced as well, yeah, and I'm sure when you were a teacher, you experienced the. Yeah, well, I think one of the best parts about this one, Amir Khan, once again, loves his to do important messages in film, and I thank uh, goodness this is a great important message about. Um, a lot of things um, yeah. in this, but like one, parenting a, a child with learning disabilities, yep. teaching a child with learning disabilities, yep. um, being a friend being to a, a friend. kid, yeah, being a friend to a kid with, um, like his buddy with the, who yeah. interestingly had an issue with his leg, who yeah. was more empathetic, obviously because of it. Yeah. 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 That was, uh, I thought... One of the um, one of the best scenes was when he went to obviously a bunch of great scenes uh, when Amir Khan confronts all these different people, but when he confronts the principal, yeah, he was like, uh, "Oh yeah, I don't think he'll last the year here." And then my favorite line, the whole thing, he was like, "Well, we can test him verbally. Knowledge is knowledge, yes, written or verbal, right?" And I thought that was amazing because. Um, 
every kid learns differently. Right. And obviously the big issue I have with the school system here in America, and I'm sure it's even worse elsewhere where there's a lot more pressure. Um, you, they're focused on testing scores and they're right. focused on just the bottom line, basically not these Great kids point are actually average. learning. Exactly. Uh, and they teach just like the, some people just stand up and lecture at you this whole time. Right. Without, and it has to do with class size and all that kind of stuff. But he was like, it's our job as teachers to accommodate everyone. Yeah. <laughs> And so, like, it's our duty to help this child right. learn. It's right. Just not just because he can't learn a certain way that everybody else can doesn't mean we should forego him. Exactly. Uh, I thought it was a beautiful message. Yeah, um, I did too. Yeah, and as a teacher, thankfully, the experience that we had is at the same school where you were a student and I was a teacher. And thankfully, the teaching approach there was not strict and rigid. Some teachers were strict and rigid. But those of us that weren't, some stories. <laughs> <laughs> those of us who weren't, like Majeka and yep. me, yep. Uh, and you can go down the list, were approached it this way, a la, to give an example, Dead Poet Society, where mm -hmm. you have teachers that go against the grains of the norms and allow students to do things that they can't do in other classes and yep. be who they want to be that they can't be in other classrooms, which I think is huge. Yeah. Uh, huge. I, a couple of things you said, things you remembered, there were... Uh, two quotes that I loved, among others. You'll find your purpose when you find your happiness. And just this throwaway line when he was talking to his girlfriend about the different kids and how it's just like you said, they should be reached. And he said, five uneven fingers make up the hand. And I thought mm -hmm. that was beautiful about how don't expect them all to fit into your stereotype of what a kid's supposed to be. Yeah. All of them are different and they're supposed to be different. Yep. That's what makes them kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I've got so much. I could talk on all three of those things, how this hit me relating to him, that little boy, and what it was like for me as a little boy and as being as an only kid. I can touch on the dad aspect and the teacher aspect. Yeah. So I could talk the, for hours about this movie. The issue... And then the artistry. From yeah, an acting obviously. standpoint, yeah. we just go through the artistry yeah, of the yeah. film. <laughs> the... When y'all, when I went into this, a lot of y'all, uh, one, you just wanted me to cry. Um, but also, you, in our q and A, I I told you I'm slightly dyslexic. And you're like, oh, you can relate to it more. That's, <laughs> I'm very slightly dyslexic. And it only really had to do with, with reading. And it wasn't an extent of his dyslexia. Which some people film. have. Yeah. Um, Which I believe, I, I heard Tom Cruise actually has quite severe dyslexia. Yeah. There's people yeah. that have very severe dyslexia. My thing in school was I have very severe ADD and ADHD. Correct. Which causes me to not care if you're not paying attention to, if you're not teaching something I don't care about, I'm just not, not going to pay attention. Um, yep. But it was never a struggle for me to actually learn if I was paying attention. It was quite easy. <laughs> it was just, one, getting to class. <laughs> 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 and, that, and that keeping you engaged, yeah, which is not, engaged. which is the teacher's fault. That's not your fault. That's, if a teacher can't keep the student engaged, that's not the kid's um, fault. But uh, I, I think this child, it was, uh, he wasn't just dyslexic. I think he was a high functioning uh, autistic child. Very much. So. I would think that people who know that, like, like yeah, my son-in-law works with kids in this, and I guarantee he'd watch this and think this kid's high, fun, high level spectrum autism. Yeah. Range. And I know I've known a bunch of autistic people in my life. They're incredibly intelligent. Yes. And extraordinarily intelligent. They're usually smarter than most people. Exactly. It's just they learn differently. Yep. Um, and so the, the it, dyslexia from my point of view doesn't really have a social aspect to it like right you know, it's mostly just learning right so it's not like you have the social dysfunction yeah dysfunction yeah um and so that's more on the autism spectrum right um so I'd but you still... could relate to the social dysfunction could you not that no. didn't have anything to do with the dyslexia uh -huh. in terms of not relating to, to, to people who no yours was different because uh -huh. if people didn't get along with you you just didn't care no no yeah okay no I've, I've never had a social thing yeah ever <laughs> yeah, because for you it was if you weren't social yeah, with me, I don't care. Yeah, I don't, I don't really give a crap. Exactly. Uh, so, but um, I thought the message of it was really important and really great uh, because I you don't often see that depicted in film. Mm -hmm. The only other time I've really seen autism on the forefront was a TV show called Parenthood. Yeah. Uh, there's an autistic child and the parents are trying to deal with that, uh, his diagnosis. Uh, and it was kind of a very similar situation. It's great. Well, show. and for adults, wasn't that Rain Man? Wasn't that the what? The, yeah, Rain yeah. Man. That's right. Yeah. Rain Man. Uh, Rain Man. Rain Man. But he was Rain not Man. on the high. Yeah. <laughs> Wapner. Wapner's on it. Wapner's on a set. Wapner's on a set. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Great film, by the so way. So good. If you haven't seen it. So good. 
Um, but yeah, I, I thought Amir Khan did amazing as a director. Yeah. Um, I didn't like, it's probably just my ADD, there was about 10 to 15 musical montages. Yeah. There was a lot of musical montages in this. And I give it, <laughs> there was, and here's where I let it go, because and this is another reason I'm glad we've watched it this far into our exposure to Indian film. Mm -hmm. This film, if I'd watched this six, seven weeks ago, this film would have annoyed me in terms of time, and I would have said you could have chopped at least 45 minutes off this thing. Yeah. But now that we know the way Indian cinema works, and we yeah. understand that the, the, the theaters, you, you've got to build in the intermission time, and you have to build and have a middle section where the intermission can come, and then you can pick it back up. Yeah. I give a lot of grace it to definitely, the time. Yeah, it definitely didn't bother me as much as it has yeah. in the past. Got a lot of... But and I think Amir Khan would tell you that, of course I could have cut 45 minutes yeah. off of that thing. <laughs> But I, I'm just not a big fan of musical montage. I'm not a big fan of long, like old school movies have long openings. Yeah. It pisses me off yeah. so much. Because I'm like, get to it the freaking boy. movie. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. That's the other thing with his ADHD <laughs> is the fact that this guy has zero patience. Absolute zero. None. It's a fun thing to <laughs> annoy him with because he'll get very upset. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I found myself getting very upset with uh, the... The, the parents, obviously. Oh, with the dad especially. The dad. Yeah. Uh, and obviously the, the teachers, I think, were the, actually the worst. If I'm critiquing acting, the oh, three for teachers sure. were the worst actors. Of course. Yeah, they, they were, of all the roles. And I don't know why portrayed. they were very big and over the top. They were almost three idiot professors. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Which, uh, they, well, I didn't which, like it. <laughs> which very well may have been what uh, Amir Khan wanted to do in terms of giving them that a particular stereotype and they may not be too far from the actual truth of what Maybe. the teachers are really like. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I agree with you. And they all obviously changed in the end. Um, and the, yeah. it was, which is another thing I didn't love. I, I did. It, it wrapped up in a <laughs> little bow. And I, that, I love that. I, I love the happy endings. I love the film. Don't get me wrong. I <laughs> love the film and I thought it was a great film. Um, and everybody should watch it. I'm just not a huge fan of happy bow tie endings. I was like, that's not real life. It's not going to work like that. <laughs> <laughs> it can sometimes. <laughs> but did I cry? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. <laughs> It's gonna, it really wasn't very close at all. <laughs> like, no, I'm not, usually I'm, a, I actually, as I was watching this, and if you're wondering if I cried, I spent probably half the film in tears. Yeah. Uh, you know when it started for me though? I cried in the three areas I've told you. There were, there were moments of relating to this little guy, mm -hmm. which can we just give a shout out to him whose birthday is almost the same day as mine. Is it uh, Darshil? Darshil Safari? Safari, I think. That little guy. Yeah, he acted. Amazing. Was fan, and for, they, the for first half, the first half of the film, was he's awesome. carrying it. Yeah, in close up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's really difficult. That is very for difficult. anybody to do, let alone a kid who's also portraying a kid who's dealing with some kind of a social disconnect and and a dyslexic problem and having to carry the depth of that emotion. Great. Obviously, Amir Khan's hand was all over the casting. And could see that that kid, he, I so connected with that little guy. Yeah. And little background on me, I'm an only only child. I, I experienced sibling life not until I was in my early teens when my dad had remarried and that uh, uh, woman had had uh, daughters who became stepsisters to me. Scandalous. Ew, yeah. <laughs> I, I was an only child and growing up in the entertainment industry, I spent a lot of my schooling, half my schooling was on set. Yeah. When I went back to school, I never went to the same school two years in a row until high school. And I remember I didn't have the kind of uh, challenge he faced, but the challenges that I faced were I never connected with anybody because I was always the new kid. I was always the outcast and I was always the, the one who was from the entertainment industry. And I remember teachers occasionally because I was hyper, I was a spaz, I would have been absolutely ADHD diagnosed back then, but back then we didn't even have doctors. <laughs> uh, and I remember teachers saying, uh, different teachers at some point would say to me when I was being hyper, cause I was a class clown, they'd say, Ricky, stop it. You're not on stage. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I tell you that now. You do all the time. <laughs> and there's something else that happened, but I really can't, I don't know if I should share it yet. Hmm. Cause there's something with this little guy and something he was called. I'll, I'll let you know what it was. The fact that he was called an idiot. Mm -hmm. Multiple times by his father. Someday, maybe in, when we're down the road, I will share more about how profound it is that our channel is called Stupid Reactions. 
long story short, and I'll elaborate on it at another point, but there was a period in my life where I was called Idiot Boy. Yeah. And this it, morning. That's right. <laughs> the fact that our channel celebrates stupidity and idiocy is pretty deep for me. And the fact that every time this little guy was called Idiot, um, and yeah. so when he was in the shower, I, uh, and my mom and dad divorced when I was seven. So, well, my parents that's, divorced when I was three. So well, well, <laughs> I you, win. You don't even remember. I win the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I I divorce just sucks, and I I remember the times when I was living with my mom. My mom had custody, and my dad would come pick me up for the weekend. And when he would drop me off, I knew I wouldn't see him for two weeks, and that always sucked. And then there was a time that my mom took me away, and my dad didn't even know it, and I was gone from my dad for like a year. So the feeling of having a parent drop you somewhere and you not have that parent and you don't understand why you can't be with your parent. When he got into the shower and was bawling in the shower, yeah. that's when I started to bawl. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was That it. was my first, and that was my first connection to the film was relating to this little guy alone, misunderstood, being called an idiot and wanting to be with his family and then also being a creative mm -hmm. who felt he was just supposed to be. I love the start of the film when he's looking at the fish. Yeah. I thought the whole animation. Yeah. Was like almost his imagination. Yes. Was great. Brilliant. Like, like the planet part. I yeah. Thought, I thought his whole. And I did. I can okay. so relate to that. And I'm hoping just like three idiots changing the college. Yeah. Pressure. I'm hoping this changed. A lot of stuff in that oh, culture man, I hope so. um, about teaching kids with disabilities and how to better understand them and better teach them because it's it's very important and they deserve to be taught just like anybody else. And you, uh, as the school system, you need to accommodate those children, not just ship them off to a special school. Exactly. <laughs> like that's just exactly. being lazy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, right when you said that, I thought I. So I know you don't like the whole wrapping everything up in a bow. No, I don't. Did you like the journey that the dad took and did you think it was realistic that it ended with him in a state of remorse and understanding what he did was wrong? I thought the best part of that whole thing was when he came in to say, I don't want you to think we're people that don't care. And then Amir Khan was like, you really don't. Yeah. This is what caring looks like. And then he was remorseful. So I thought that was great because if he was like, I don't want you to think people care. It's like... Oh, we know you care. No, I agree. Yeah. But at the end, he really comes to a full revelation yeah. at the end. And yeah, no, that was fine. Okay, good. I thought yeah, I didn't know if fine. you would think that was too much wrapping it up in a bow. No. Because I love the part that the like, dad got there. Yeah, the, the, there's that. And then he won the competition. He won. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see another part that just made me... There's so many parts that made me cry. Was the... When, uh, when he comes around the corner... Doggone it, there it is. When he comes around the corner, I see it. <laughs> he just wants to see what the teacher was painting and, and the look on his face that they captured when he realizes it was a portrait of him. Oh, yeah. yeah that was, that was so beautiful. Yeah. So many moments like that I thought that were so... Especially when he um, realizes and it was a double whammy for the kid. When Amir Khan says, there was this guy, and he's teaching the class, he says, who couldn't understand anything. Yeah, and he yeah. shows him Albert Einstein. And then he goes down the long list, right? Yeah. Then they go to leave the room, and he's talking to the little guy. He says, you know what I was talking about? And I, like him, was thinking he was going to say him. Yeah. Yeah. And when he said me, I started crying again. Yeah. Uh, it was so beautiful. That was a good moment. So touching. Yeah, and then, then that was a great speech showing all the people that have dyslexia or yeah. learning disability. True stories, all yeah. of those. Like Tim Burton is yep. another, he's, he's autistic. He's genius. One of the most genius directors of the past century. Yep. Um, and he's so unique and gifted. Be um, and I believe it's because of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great message. And so I would recommend this to anybody. I give it, oh a, my I give it an A+. Plus. I love the film. A+. Right? Plus. These kinds of films are the kinds of films I wish that we were making more of here in the States. And let me, now, let me rephrase that. It's not that. I wish that people were seeing these films. Yeah. Now, I do wish we'd make more like them. But I wish we were getting more of these films seen here because for me, and I'll get on a soapbox for this thing, movies and acting is storytelling. And the reason you tell a story is because there's going to be a moral to the story. So you have a moral to the story at the end and every film we've seen, especially the Amir Khan films, mm -hmm. have an extraordinarily, not just an extraordinarily powerful moral. Important. Important. And the way in which... Amir Khan's films can touch on subjects that can offend people. 
Yeah, he, I love and how don't. He, yeah, I love how he touches up, like PK with right. the religious. And he does it without like being politically correct. Yeah. He doesn't take, uh, he, he doesn't play it safe. Yeah. But he still doesn't, be, he's not offensive. It's just, you sense it's beautiful every ounce him. of yeah. the honesty and the genuineness of, of the man. I really imagine if you were to sit down and talk to Amir Khan, you'd find out these are very near and dear important things to his heart. Because yeah. it, it's seen in the work and it's seen in his eyes when he's, he's working. Yeah. Uh, so just love it. Well, thank you so much for recommending it to us. You are like six for six so and, far. And amazing. In, in recommending great films to us. Thank you so much for not giving us a, a shitty film. Yeah. Keep them coming. Please let us know what we should watch and review next. I'll yes. probably put up a little poll for you. And the, hey, the challenge still stands, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag make Corbin cry. It's been, what? My entire life. 20, what years now? 27 yeah. years. It hasn't happened. He's so. never cried ever in his life. <laughs>